My name is Kaylee Harder. I'm a career service consultant with SAS Jobs Career Services. Career Services is an employment and career development organization. Career development is a lifelong process of managing learning, work, leisure, and transitions. We're here to assist the residents of Saskatchewan in getting through that process, achieving their career goals and realizing their full employment potential. We're here to help everyone in Saskatchewan, youth, mature workers, Indigenous people, people with disabilities, newcomers to Saskatchewan, newcomers to Canada, anyone in the province. SAS Jobs Career Services has a wide variety of programs and services available. We've got an ear on the pulse of Saskatchewan. We know what's going on with the labour market and we're able to provide direction and advice towards new businesses, new opportunities, and are able to provide direction and advice to our clients. We utilize virtual delivery methods as well as in-person events. These events can provide valuable information to job seekers, help them make a connection to an employer, as well as help employers find suitable candidates for the positions they need to fill. I find my job rewarding because I get to work with a wide range of people from very diverse backgrounds. Not only am I helping them with their career journey, they teach me about our province and the people in it. I get to help them plan and prepare for a bright and rewarding future. Our clients' successes are our successes too. Saskatchewan is a great place to grow your career because our province is thriving with opportunity. The people who live here are friendly and welcoming. Saskatchewan is the best place to live, work and do business. People can get in contact with us by visiting saskatchewan.ca and looking for career services. They can call 1-833-613-0485 and choose option two, or they can email us at careerservices at gov.sk.ca. Our career professionals are eagerly waiting to help you with your career journey.
Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon and welcome to the 2021 National Career Month Career Services Career Panel. The title for this year's event is The Path to Success, and we want to thank Sask Jobs for running this event today. My name is Colleen Strau. I'm here on behalf of the Saskatchewan Career Development Association, along with a fantastic panel of people to help answer your questions today. Before we begin, I want to acknowledge that I'm currently here presenting from Treaty 4 territory. These territories are the uh, traditional territories of the Cree, Salto, Dakota, Lakota, Nakota, and the homeland of the Métis and Michif Nation. And these lands continue to be today the shared territory of many diverse people from near and far. I'm grateful to be here with you all today, and I hope that this event is meaningful to you and that you have some of your questions answered. I know there's a great group of experts here to help you out. So before we begin the event, I'd just like to go over a couple of housekeeping items. I know we're all very used to the Zoom etiquette, but it's always nice to have those reminders because sometimes we come so accustomed to it that we might forget. So I'll just remind you to keep your microphones muted. Um, and the structure for this event will be, I'm gonna begin with introductions to our panel members. And then each of those panel members are gonna talk a little bit about the services that they offer through their organization. So you can learn a little bit more about the specific programs that they offer. Following that introduction and service um, detailed information, we will open it up to uh, the attendees to ask questions, okay? So if you have questions later on, there will be a chat function where you can uh, enter your questions to have them answered by those panel members. Okay, if there are any questions that don't happen to be answered today, please be reassured that the team from SASC Jobs will contact you and have those questions answered. It is their goal to make sure that everybody leaves this event um, happy and satisfied and feeling like their questions are answered. Okay, so this webinar is being recorded and will be available following this event on the SAS Jobs YouTube channel as well. So I don't want to spend any more time on those housekeeping items. I'd love to dive right in to get the word from our panelists and our experts here today. So I'm going to begin um, some brief introductions here. So I'm going to hand it over to our first panelist here, who is Kaylee Harder from um, SAS Jobs. Hello, everyone. Uh, so as Colleen said, my name is Kaylee Harder. I am a career development professional with SAS Jobs Career Services. And uh, I'm here to tell you a little bit about what we do. So thank you for coming today. Uh, so SAS Jobs Career Services recently had a name change. Uh, in the past, you may have known us as Labor Market Services. Our new name makes it easier for people to recognize us and know what we do. Uh, but I'm going to tell you a little bit more. <laughs> Uh, so SAS Jobs Career Services is an employment and career development organization. Career development is a lifelong process of managing learning, work, leisure, and transitions in order to move towards a personally determined and evolving preferred future. So it doesn't matter how old you are or what background you have, we're here to help all Saskatchewan people realize their full employment potential. Uh, we want to empower people to take control of their careers and to move forward into their preferred career plans, help them reach their goals. Our career development professionals have the knowledge and skills to help individuals manage their careers. People who work with a career development professional have stronger learning and, and uh, career outcomes than people who try and manage their careers all on their own. And that's because career development is a partnership. We are part of your team when you work with us. We're here to share knowledge, share tools and resources with you so you can make informed decisions about your career. When meeting with one of our career development professionals, they'll complete a detailed assessment with you and assist you with creating a career action plan that is personalized to your needs and your goals. We can help with career planning, resumes, cover letters, uh, navigating online or virtual tools and resources, preparing and practicing for job interviews, identifying one's strengths and transferable skills, and researching local labor market information, which can greatly assist in making an informed decision about one's future. Once a client is assessed, we can also connect them to relevant programs provided by our community organizations if it's applicable to their career action plan. Our services can be accessed from anywhere in the province. 
We provide guidance and assistance to our clients by telephone or in-person appointments, as well as virtually, like with Microsoft Teams, for example. And we have business centers in locations across the province where job seekers can access computers, photocopiers, fax machines. If you'd like to meet with a career development professional or utilize resources in our business center, you can contact us to make an appointment. Our career development professionals are eagerly awaiting an opportunity to help you plan for a bright and rewarding future. Thank you so much, Kelly. That all sounds very exciting and we look forward to hearing more from you. I'm gonna you. welcome Monica to introduce herself. Thanks very much. Uh, and I'm Monica Kruger. I'm the founder and CEO of a small business called Global Info Brokers. And we run a school called the Praxis School of Entrepreneurship, where our primary purpose is to help people create their own jobs through starting their own businesses. I look forward to talking a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Monica. And next, I'd like to introduce Dallas. Sorry about that, my mouse disappeared on me. Hi there, I'm Dallas. I am the executive director at Ignite Adult Learning in Regina. And I'm very excited to be here today and hear what some of your questions are and to actually learn about some of these other services as well. So thank you for coming and I'm looking forward to it. Thanks so much, Dallas. And uh, finally, I'd like to introduce our last but not least panel member. Um, Bill, would you like to go ahead and introduce yourself? Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Bill Polinski, representing the Community Service Center. Um, I would say that uh, we, we have uh, a full range of services and resources for people on the career journey. So I really look forward to sharing the information with you. And I, I want to uh, compliment anybody who has signed on for this because you're, uh, you're obviously interested in, in uh, career direction and career growth. So good on you. And look forward to chatting with you in a bit. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, everyone, for your introductions there. And I, I couldn't agree more, Bill. Anybody who has tuned in, you're either in a career or looking for a career or just thinking about career change and career evolution, um, career development practitioners that are here on this uh, meeting all know and understand, as Kaylee said very well, um, that it's great to have somebody to walk along that journey with, to share knowledge and information. And careers aren't what they used to be in the past. There's constant change and we have a new world and a post-pandemic world. So this is a great way to begin that learning journey and to just uh, reflect and analyze what, what that might look like for you. And everybody's different and unique, um, but it's great to, like Kaylee also said, identify strengths and make informed decisions. So it's great to have you here and we're thrilled. So on that note, I'd love to uh, allow all the presenters to dive in a little bit deeper um, and in particular identify um, what your program does and how your organizations can help the audience members who may be tuning in here today um, on their path to success. Um, so again, I would love to begin with you, Kaylee, if you could tell us a little bit more about SAS Jobs and how SAS Jobs can help the listeners and the people who are on this webinar today on their path to career success. Definitely. I am just going to share my screen here. Oh, shoot. I, I apologize. I, I seem to have lost the share option. Is one of our moderators able to point that out to me? Okay, I'm not gonna worry about sharing then. Uh, I will just kind of dive right in. <laughs> Sorry, everyone, it wasn't all that interesting anyway. <laughs> uh, so SAS Jobs Career Services, um, like I said, we're a career and uh, employment organization. Uh, we have uh, a number of career development professionals that have been trained to assist the residents of Saskatchewan in reaching their goals. Uh, so when it comes to a job search, things like resumes, cover letters, job interview skills are all very, very important. We're here to help people with practicing, preparing, uh, updating resumes, creating new cover letters, all those things that go into a job search. Uh, a number of people that come to us come to us for career planning. So we're here to assist by helping you locate the resources you need to make an informed decision, exploring the National Job Bank to find out what outlooks are like for a career and what education options may connect to what your goals are. Uh, sorry, without the presentation, I lost my spot here. 
<laughs> uh, so no matter where you are in your career journey, we're ready to just pick up with you and meet you where you're at. We work at the pace that you want to set. So we're not going to move too fast. We're not going to move too slow. Uh, we're just going to help guide you through developing a career action plan, uh, helping you select a suitable occupation. Uh, we can provide self-assessments to assist you in identifying your strengths, your interests, your goals, determine what your transferable skills are, and help think outside the box to come up with some great ideas for a, a new career path if, if that's the goal. Uh, we help people with locating job training as well. We've got connections to a lot of institutions and organizations throughout the province and can help you get in touch with the right people to get the education or training that you need to accomplish your goals. We've got a large number of community-based organizations uh, who we've partnered with, as you're going to hear from some of those people today, and can help by making referrals to the right program helping you identify which programs are the best fit for you and uh, determining eligibility. Uh, we are experts at labor market information. We have our ear on the pulse of the province, as I said in the intro video, if you caught that. Um, we can help you find out where are the jobs? Are they going to be available in the future or is it a kind of dwindling industry? What sectors are hiring? Where are they hiring? What kind of background do I need to get that job? What kind of skills do I have to have? Uh, how much money are going to be people banking in that job? We can help by locating all of that information for you. Uh, so you can make an informed decision about which option is the best one for you. Uh, our services just uh, last year got redesigned. So we no longer do only in-person appointments with people. We're now doing virtual and telephone too. So that has opened it up to be available to now everyone in the province. You don't have to live in one of our service centers or one of the centers that has a community organization. You can call us and we can do everything virtually. I help people from every corner of the province to help just achieve their goals, provide information, provide resources. Uh, I guess that's, that's really all I can think to say at this moment. <laughs> well, that's excellent. I, I really appreciate that because it is so important, like in our province, there's so many diverse needs depending on where you live. And so knowing that there are career development practitioners out there that can serve you and kind of hone in on your community and what that the job prospects might look like. I know in the urban centers and the rural areas, there's a huge like difference when you're job seeking, right? Definitely. So just having somebody that's available that can kind of help wherever you are is I yeah. think, a big plus. And uh, I'm sure that the people who receive those services are grateful for that. So yeah, thank you so much for that. Thank I really you. appreciate that. And um, Monica, I'd love to invite you to speak a little bit more about your um, organization and the services that you have for entrepreneurs. Well, thanks very much. Uh, first of all, I wanted to say thank you to Kaylee. Um, the staff at SAS Jobs are incredible. We've worked with them for 30 years now so so there's just uh, really they have your interests at heart and I appreciated the, the comment about thinking outside the box because that's actually what entrepreneurship is all about and that's what we really focus on when we're working with people who decide that they're going to uh, choose entrepreneurship as a career now I'm going to try and share my screen because I just had a few fun facts I wanted to share let's see if this actually works here and we'll give it a shot and then I'll just I just have a couple of slides that I'm going to start uh, with you. So our um, school name is the Praxis School of Entrepreneurship. And uh, we have a number of programs that uh, we call the SMART series. And our focus in our school is entrepreneurs teaching entrepreneurs. So I wanted to just provide a couple of really short facts that come out of the Saskatchewan Small Business Profile. In Saskatchewan, we have 150,000 businesses. And almost 99% have less than 50 employees and a stunning 87% have between zero and four employees. So we are a land of very small businesses. So it is not um, difficult to think about it as a career. You don't have to be starting a large company. You can be a solopreneur. You don't have to have 50 employees. You don't have to have hundred employees. Um, so most people have a small number of employees or none at all. 
And we actually find that these small and medium-sized enterprises employ um, about one-third, that should be one-third, not 1 1.3, uh, of the workers in Saskatchewan with 25% of the payroll. So we have a pretty big impact. There's lots of us, so we do have an impact. And interestingly, Saskatchewan has the highest concentration of small businesses per thousand people in Canada, which is pretty exciting. Again, an innovative province, uh, can't hold us back. We're busy and ready to rock and roll. And uh, I just have to personally say that being an entrepreneur is a great career. And we've worked with about 1,200 people through our programs to date, and they would all say the same thing. It's, it's, uh, it's wonderful to be able to do what you feel passionate about and make a living at it as well. So just really briefly, here's a, a list of the, the, the SMART programs that we have. Our signature program is the Start Smart, which is the launch program. And this is a, really an entrepreneurship immersion. It's uh, developed, run, and coached by entrepreneurs for entrepreneurs. So it's really lived experience is huge in our programming. We also developed a program called Stay Smart during COVID, and we'll continue with it. And it was to help people stay in business. Uh, we piloted it and we had 19 companies join and all 19 stayed in business. So we found that the um, peer coaching and peer work was really useful. We also have a program called Grow Smart. We're just recently going to be starting a DigiSmart, which is to help entrepreneurs uh, skill up in the digital side of their businesses. We also have a Sask Smart for uh, people coming in from other countries. And our future programs are going to be Exit Smart and Succeed Smart so that small companies can find a way to have a succession plan in place. The, um, and finally, just the, the um, things that make us a little bit different is we do provide our program in a virtual, hybrid, and in-person uh, format. Uh, it's lived experience I talked about already. There's lots of peer support. We have coaching big connections to the entrepreneurial ecosystem because we want people to make sure they've developed their networks by the time they leave us. So you're very safe, you're very supported. We have a 95% start rate and everybody who takes our program, they reach break even in about on average and half the time as not taking the program, which increases their sustainability over time. Um, and at the end of the day, um, uh, you know, we serve right across the province. We can do that. COVID ramped us up really fast, like a lot of organizations uh, had to. But we, we love what we do. We take people through a good assessment. We support them all the way. We customize the learning. So we really want to make it um, an attractive option for people. If they've been thinking about it, you know, they should apply. And right now we have a program that supports anyone who self-identifies with a disability, visible or invisible. And I would encourage them to give us a call. Uh, we're taking applications now for the January intake and we would love to have a conversation with you. So with that, I'm going to stop the presentation and stop sharing my screen and let the next panelist speak. Thank you so much, Monica. That, those are some pretty incredible statistics. So I just want to congratulate you because obviously your organization is doing some tremendous work there. And even for those 19 um, small businesses who were able to stay in business throughout COVID, I think that's, yeah, that's a huge testament to, to the work and the knowledge that you have. So thanks so much for sharing. And again, province-wide, although some of us were kind of forced into it, I think it's a huge plus because uh, we can just make all of it more accessible to everyone. So thanks again, Monica. I appreciate that. Um, and Dallas, would you like to share a little bit more about Ignite for us? Absolutely. I am also going to share my screen, hopefully. There we go. Start my slideshow. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you again so much for um, having me here. I'm really excited to tell you a little bit about Ignite today. Um, so we're formerly known as Ignite Adult Learning Corporation, but we just tend to go by Ignite. Um, we're based here in Regina. We're a nonprofit charity, and we have employment program programs and academic programs for people that haven't finished high school but want to. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about us and how we see ourselves. Um, our mission is to empower marginalized adults to reach their employment, education, and personal goals. We value all forms of diversity and strive to create a safe and culturally responsive learning space for everyone. 
So this is, we actually invited some, we just got a new building. So we're right next to the Milky Way in Regina now, which is the greatest landmark ever because everybody who's been to Regina knows where the Milky Way is. Um, so we actually invited some of our students to come in and do a photo shoot with us just so we could show off our new building. So that was exciting. Um, Ignite has actually been in operation in Regina for about 30 years. And we've accumulated hundreds of success stories over those years. Um, this is one of our graduating classes. This is Tanya McNeese. She went to Ignite about 25 years ago. Um, she's now an IT consultant for the government and the chair of our board of directors. So we're really happy to be able to continue working with her. We also have Christy Shaw over in the other one who gave me a photo where we couldn't really see her, but we could see her kids. <laughs> so anyway, uh, she's been working with us a lot. She's been guiding some of our work um, as we strive to respond to the calls to action for the Truth and Reconciliation Committee. So I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, in early 2020, we had a leadership change and then COVID happened and there's just been pretty much constant evolution since then. So what have we been up to? Um, like Monica was mentioning and Kaylee was mentioning, we have also made the switch to be able to accommodate both online and in-person learning. Um, which is really exciting for us because it means that if we have people that want to participate in our program from outside of Regina, they can actually do that um, online. So that is really fantastic. It also supports our students here because in the land of COVID, um, anytime you have a symptom or your kid has a symptom and then they have to stay home from school, you're going to be at home. So we, we all of our classes are now blended in person and online. Um, we've also included some new educational options so that everybody's um, starting where they need to. So you're not going to just get thrust into a program that you're maybe not ready for. A lot of our students left school in like grade five or six. And that's pretty a different starting point than someone who was doing grade 12 courses last year. So we're really excited to have a few different options for our students. Uh, we've been working hard to make friends with a lot of the other organizations in Regina to be able to refer students around if they need um, various different supports. We have our community connections program, which is guest speakers and people within the community that have volunteered to act as mentors for our students. So they share their own stories and they offer support to our students as they wish. Uh, we do educational psychology assessments for all of our students if they need them because many, many of our students um, left school for a reason and the reason is usually that it wasn't going particularly well amidst all sorts of other um, family dynamics and that type of thing. So a um, fair number of our students do have learning disabilities. So we wanna make sure that we get those identified and that they're supported to be able to go through their education. We are now, I'm gonna talk about our academic programs in a minute, but for students in our GED programs, they can write their GED tests here now, which is fantastic. <laughs> um, a lot of our students also experience test anxiety, so having to go somewhere else to write is a, is a huge added stressor. Um, we've been building an Indigenous cultural opportunities program to sort of respond to the calls to action, as I mentioned before, but also to build in some depth and in our program, roughly. 90 to 95 percent of our students are Indigenous and we just really want to make sure that we're doing our part to um, provide them with opportunities to learn about various different Indigenous cultures and have different activities for them to participate in. So we've been working with a few different organizations on that. I've got this photo up. <laughs> they didn't have a together group grad photo um, because they weren't allowed to be together. So they've all got their <laughs> individual photos that I've put together. But this was our very first class in the pandemic. So we were really proud of them. <laughs> so our program is called the FLAMES program. It stands for Fostering Learning and Marketable Employment Skills. So it kind of talks about the education piece and the employment piece that we work on. Um, so our non-academic classes that we do, we do SMART, a different kind of SMART <laughs> uh, addiction recovery. So this is, we actually have everyone in our program go through it, even if they've never suffered from addiction, because it's tools to use for being a human. And we just find that they, they benefit everybody, including us as instructors. So um, everyone does that. 
we do employment skills. So we work on resume preparation, um, communication skills, teamwork skills. Uh, we do mock interviews with the students so they can actually practice developing those skills as well. We do some life skills stuff. So budgeting, wellness, and driver's training for anyone that needs it. The Indigenous Cultural Opportunities Program, community connections, and then individual like career and academic so we make sure that everyone has their solid career plan when they leave, but also if there's going to be an additional academic piece after they have that as well. And then we have our academic program. So there's a GED program that takes a whole year and where you work with our teachers here. There's a six month GED program where, you, again, you work with our teachers here. And that the difference between those two is just what do you remember from school? <laughs> How long ago was it that you left? And where are you at right now? Sometimes our students are just ready to, like their reading comprehension is really good and they're ready to jump into some of the more complicated math stuff and they can do it in six months. Sometimes if it's been 15 or 20 years since you've been in school, you might need a little bit more time to get your school brain working before you're gonna get to being ready for the GED. And then we now also can do an adult 12 diploma program. And that's been really, really popular um, for a lot of our students wanting to get that actual grade 12 because it does open up more doors um, in terms of career options, but also post-secondary options. So I just wanted to show you <laughs> that any of those programs can get you first to graduate for with either a GED or a grade 12 or both. So if you need, you come in and we do some, some evaluations and we're like, okay, you need to start here. So you would maybe go through one of these two programs and then when you're done and you've got everything all figured out or if you, you know, finish early, you can bump right into the Adult 12 program and go from there. The Adult 12 program is done with SunWest Learning Center, which is a, an actual school division. So your teachers are sort of accessible by email, but they're not live in the building. And for someone to go from, I left in grade six, I haven't thought about school in 15 years and <clears throat> I don't really remember much um, to go into, okay, now I want you to write a grade 12 essay by yourself um, is, is too much of a jump. So we often will have students kind of work with our teachers for a little while and then move into the grade 12 program. And some of them, we have a lot of referrals from the adult campus here in Regina. If you were just working on grade 12, and, but you got too old, <laughs> essentially, to do it in the school system, you come to us. All of our programs are completely free and students are eligible for PTA, which is the Provincial Training Allowance, while they're here. So our biggest funder is the Ministry of Immigration and Career Training, who is also involved in setting this up. So we're very grateful to them. Um, we have a number of other funders in the community as well. If you're wanting to get more information or to get hold of us, ignite.ca is the best option. You can also call or text our number. And if you're looking to get hold of me, this is my phone number and my email. Awesome. That's so great. Thank you so much, Dallas. We are, yeah, I think it's been a privilege for me to learn more about your programs, and I think they're very exciting and really generating a lot of change in the community. So I'm, I'm glad to know that. And um, yeah, really great to hear from you. Um, now I'd like to welcome our final speaker uh, to tell us a little bit more about his programs. Uh, Bill, would you like to, to open up? I'd like to open up the floor to you to share. Thank you very much. I, I, I know that we, uh, we have to go through so much information in a very short period of time. So what I want to focus on is the, uh, the fact that uh, Prince Albert, as a gateway city to both the south and the north, uh, serves people from all over uh, the northern part of the province, as well as uh, 30 to 60 mile radius uh, to the city. Um, now, everybody is on, on, on some sort of a journey as it relates to their employment. And many people start at many different levels in the journey. So what we've uh, worked on very, very hard is to provide a full service employment agency that's uh, strength-based and person-centered. So we start where the, the person is and we try to uh, match up the appropriate level of service. So it could be somebody coming in for our self and, and uh, assistant service level who basically needs 
a little bit of help finding where the jobs are. Maybe they need a covering letter. Maybe they need a resume. Maybe they need interview practice. Uh, maybe they need some minor supports like work boots and, and maybe a bus pass. And we could provide that. Uh, now, the next sort of level of service is for people who are maybe uh, have been looking for a while and they're experiencing some, uh, some lack a success due to, to whatever reason. Uh, they obviously have skills, they obviously have an attitude and a drive. Uh, we want to keep that alive and we want to provide good in-depth employment counseling, a referral to other community agencies if we need to. Uh, at this level of service, we have access uh, to something called a work assessment, which is money that the agency raises from operating SARCAN depots. And we in turn translate that money into uh, paid support for both the employer and, and the potential employee. Basically, it gives the employer a chance to test drive his, his potential employment uh, prospect, and it gives uh, people a real live hands-on experience. Um, now, maybe the next level of service deals with uh, somebody uh, who is experiencing maybe a need for uh, additional client supports, and maybe the, they would benefit from a program. So we have a program that's wide and, and varied. It serves anybody at any age that's facing some challenges um, and, and it's called the Career Bridging Program. All of our programs are funded by the Ministry of Immigration and Career Training. So we're very grateful for that. Uh, we have an older worker program, which is based very much on the same career bridging principles um, and designed to specifically fit that demographic and their unique needs. Uh, now, uh, aside from the regular run of programs, and you can see it's almost like ordering a vehicle. You have your basic package, and then you've got a package with more options, and then you've got a full, full meal deal uh, with all the bells and whistles. Uh, I use that analogy to sort of explain the continuum of service that we, we provide. Uh, in addition, a very specialized service and program that we offer is called the PACE program. It's the Prince Albert Supported Employment Program and really focuses on assisting people with disabilities uh, to either get training, uh, to get experience on the job, to maybe su have support with job coaches or mentors or work assessments or provide technological supports. So I think the key questions that people approach us with are, uh, what can I do? I don't know what I can do. So that fits very well with the work prep program uh, and the, the counseling. Uh, where can I find the job that I can do? That fits with our labor market information. It would be part of our self and assisted services. How do I find that job? Again, that would be through the work prep or the individualized services. Uh, what training do we need? Uh, that would be something that people would explore through programs uh, and through the individual counseling. And how do I find funds for training? And again, that's something that across all of our programs and services uh, we deal with. Um, again, we're, we're very privileged to uh, have received funds to provide that full menu of service. And uh, you can reach us. Uh, I know they had some infographics with our contact information, but we also have a website that deals with this. And I want to close with saying there's basically uh, two groups of people in the province. There's those of us who are from Prince Albert, and then there's those who really wish they were. So anyway, I want to thank you all for your participation. And I look forward to uh, answering any questions that I can. Thanks a lot. Thanks so much, Bill. That's fantastic. Um, I really appreciate everyone, well, your input and then everyone's input in sharing about your organizations. And I must say that, yeah, I'm just really excited uh, like from hearing from all of you because I know that really anywhere that you as a listener are at, um, all these people are more than willing and enthusiastic and prepared to guide you on your career journey. So I think that's something we really want everyone to take away is that you're supported and um, that there is an answer to your question, whatever it might be and wherever you're coming at from whichever walk of life. So that's fantastic. And we really appreciate everyone sharing. So at this point in time, we know that uh, a lot of you might have individual questions that you might want to share and ask of the panelists or of the SAS jobs group um, or just kind of in general, like, OK, where do I go from here? And I have this like burning career question. I just don't know where to turn. I don't know what to do. Um, whatever it might be, uh, pop that in the chat and I'm going to work at uh, sending those questions around. Um, 
And uh, yeah, so I have a question. It looks like um, here specifically for you, Dallas. Um, there's a young person uh, under the age of 18 who doesn't want to go to uh, adult campus. So can you tell us a little bit more about an age requirement or what, what that person may do? Yeah, we can accept students 16 and older. So yes, you're welcome as long as you're 16 and older. 16 and older. That's great. That's excellent. Um, while we're waiting for some more questions to come in, because I know there's there's quite a few, but I'm just going to give them a moment here. Um, I do have a question about intake processes. So Monica, I know you run some of the like uh, entrepreneur programs, and I know you said there's one specifically coming in January, but how do you run that intake process? So if I'm looking at opening a business and I want to take your program, um, like, is there a certain time frame that I have to do that within? Yeah, well, the sooner the better. Um, so when a person is interested in the program, they can give us a call and they'll speak to Elaine Mantica, who's our coordinator. And she'll have a conversation about generally how the program works so they can uh, ask any questions they want about, you know, the commitment and the time frame and all of that kind of thing. And also she'll ask about the idea um, and kind of how it fits with their experience and a bit about their vision. And if it looks like this is a, a, a program that they might want to continue applying for, then what they'll do is uh, she'll have a application package that they can complete and she'll work with SAS jobs as well to make sure that um, the funding side of it is taken care of, uh, in particular from the disability, um, self-declared self disability perspective. So it's a it's a process. Once they take the package, the package has an assessment that's got a kind of a description of the idea that you want to do and where you've thought about it. It's got a personality profile that is designed for entrepreneurs so we can kind of see how they fit with their idea. So it's a, it's a little bit of a package to complete. But, you know, if somebody wants to start a business, it's an investment of their time and energy. So we're, we're kind of hoping that that helps them lay it out on paper and get it out of their brain and they can see if this is the right place for them. Good. And then a follow up question just came in um, with regards to the disability program beginning in January. Mm -hmm. um, they're just hoping you could help define what disability. I know you said in your introduction, it could be um, seen or unseen, but could you tell us a little bit more about what that is? Mm -hmm. Actually, we had had some really quite big discussions about this because we wanted it to be as all encompassing as possible. And it is. So it could be anything from a learning disability, mental health, uh, physical, which could be, um, you know, somebody could be going through chemo or something. Uh, it can be anything like that. It could be um, anxiety, um, uh, ADHD, as well as the, um, the typical, uh, what people would consider to be a disability, which is what you can see. But there's so much more. So anyone who has, uh, a challenge kind of in the mainstream and has a uh, self-declared a disability is free to give us a call. Yeah, absolutely. Just kind of don't, don't hesitate. Don't hesitate. Don't try yeah. to say, is this, should I, am I, you know, and people still sometimes think about uh, the disability as, as something negative and it, it isn't, it's just a way, different way of interacting in the world really at the end of the day, when it comes to setting up a business and businesses can be extremely great for someone who has a disability because they can construct their own reality and they can construct how they work and interact with their clients and suppliers and they don't have to sort of go along with something that's been constructed for them so I think that that's a really good really good option. The, the more diverse representation that we have in the career force it's um, the better because we absolutely have groups of people so the more different groups of people that we have serving others is representative and and crucial for us so thank you so much for that monica i appreciate it um keely i have a question for you we have somebody who is wondering okay i'd love to access SAS job services do i need to make an appointment do i have to go online to do that do i have to call ahead or can i just walk in to one of your um centers and, and get service without um without making an appointment we definitely encourage calling or emailing uh, and yeah, I think this should work for me this time. Share. All right, hopefully the contact information just came up. <laughs> uh, to get an appointment, you just either call the toll free number or send us an email and someone on our career, our, sorry, our client engagement team 
will register you. So they'll get some of your information, contact information, ask a couple of demographic questions and schedule a time that works for you to be able to meet with somebody. And you have the option whether that meeting is gonna be by phone or in person at a local office or virtually with uh, something like Zoom or Microsoft Teams. Perfect, that's great. Good to know. Um, and for Dallas, I have a question that's coming in here. Um, someone on our group here would love to know if you could briefly describe the difference between a GED and a grade 12. Sure. So a GED is a sort of universally recognized high school equivalency. Um, and it will, if you're looking for various jobs, it's often more than enough, and it will get you into some post-secondary. However, if you're looking to get into certain programs, um, a grade 12 is an actual grade 12 diploma. It takes longer, there's more classes, it has a, a more of an academic rigor to it. So it just, it kind of depends where you're headed to which one makes sense. And usually what you end up doing is you come in, you write our entrance exams, we have a conversation with you that says, okay, well, we think you're here. Um, here's your route to grade 12, um, work with our teachers for a bit or go right there, depending on your situation. Awesome, perfect, thank you so much. Um, and there's a few questions that are coming in like, okay, I have this experience or have an undergraduate degree um, and I just like to know what are the qualifications that I need to find a job. Um, and I'm just gonna say that I, like I know Kaylee, that would be a perfect way, a perfect reason to contact SAS jobs is kind of like, just to get more information or bill your services to, um, I think pretty much any of these panelists, if you're just like, hey, this is my situation and this is what I have. Um, I really love to know like, how can I get, you know, degree equivalency or how can I um, get a job when the IT sector, like what education do I need? All of these people on, I think this panel would be great places to start. Um, and particularly SAS jobs would be able to refer you out to a provider that's in the area and the community that you live. So starting with that um, SAS jobs email would be a fantastic place to go. Um, now, a question from a university graduate, um, how do they find a job in their field? Um, I'd love, Kaylee, if you could answer that, because this is kind of close to what I mentioned, but if you could just give some direction about how you would specifically help somebody in that area. Oh, if somebody comes to me looking for a, a specific job, the first thing we do is start researching the local labor market. What companies should we be targeting? Like, who should we be looking at? Uh, where, you know, what sites to keep an eye on? Uh, you know, making sure that the resume is really profiling and highlighting their education and all the skills that are going to be useful for that career path, helping with customizing cover letters, you know, individually for each different job that's being applied for. So it really makes an impact on the employer that's receiving it. Really, the number one piece of advice, though, I'd say is connect with us so that somebody can sit down with you and fully understand your background. You can really describe to them what your goals are, and they'll help you create a customized career action plan to help you accomplish your goals. That's awesome. And customize is key there, right? Because everyone's path, as we're seeing, even from the chat, like everyone has a different path that they're coming to it from. So customized is key and having that customized service is gonna really be what helps you get um, kick-started there. So Bill, we have a question, cause I know in your presentation, you mentioned you have an older worker program. And I won't go into the semantics of how we define older worker, but we have somebody here who's in their early 50s, not old, but you know, maybe an older worker um, who has uh, university educated, but out of work for a few years. Um, so wants to get back at it and, um, you know, just really needs help in that starting process. Could you talk about your older worker program? Um, and again, if you don't live in PA, I think the, the general information, if you need from SAS jobs, they'll be able to support you too. But I'd love to hear more, Bill, about your specific program with the older workers. Sure, thank you for that question. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and as you pointed out, uh, contacting uh, career services is always an excellent place to start in order to access community programs or services. Our program specifically um, targets people between the ages of 55 and 64. Although we have gained exemptions, our oldest uh, participant was age 73. Uh, and it's really interesting to, to look at how, how people um, come 
come into their circumstances. Some people retire and they want a second career or they just want that job to kind of help um, supplement their income. Maybe they're supporting aging parents, maybe they're supporting kids in university. But where we start from is to look at the uh, skill set that people have. Uh, we also really focus on uh, not only the same processes that Kaylee talked about, but what we call creative job search techniques. Because a lot of people uh, have been in the workforce for 20, 30 years, and they've forgotten how, and, and things have changed. It used to be that you'd walk in, you'd talk to employer, you'd shake hands, and the job was yours. Uh, now there's a lot more science, and there's a lot more marketing. I'll call it marketing, because that's basically what you're doing, is you're marketing yourself to employers. So you really want to be focused. You want to be specific. Uh, you want to make sure that you've got a class uh, resume, uh, a classy resume and a really good covering letter. And you want to not just do uh, what I call a Hail Mary resume and covering letter and broadcast it to everybody in the world. What you want to do is really, really make it specific to the opportunity that you're pursuing. And uh, that's part of the creative job search technique. A lot of people balk at that. They kind of hesitate. Well, my resume should be good enough. Well, if you're looking at at different skill sets and looking at different employers, you really want to attract that employer. So a generic resume is not as likely to do it as a specific one. I, I hope that's some useful information and helps address the question. Uh, and uh, you know, we've got our phone number on the website. I'd certainly be willing to answer any other questions if, if somebody wanted to give me a call later. That's awesome, Bill. Thank you so much. Yeah, and um, just getting up to date, like you said, about practices, right? Because things change in a and even I look at the last year or so how much things have changed and evolved so just getting that refresher and encouragement um, from somebody and someone to bounce ideas off of is just always extremely helpful I find so that's that's a great piece of advice so Dallas um I have somebody here who has written their GED some time ago and has grade 12 in almost all the subjects but maybe missing like a subject so they would like to know if I come back do I have to do the whole thing over or if there's just a piece that I'm missing um like where like do they have to start from square one or can they jump back into where they left off um if you could um. advise no. So the short answer is no. Uh, the slightly longer answer is we would pull your transcripts from wherever you did your grade 12 courses, and then we would match them up with what you need to get an adult 12 and uh, fill in the blanks, essentially. Perfect. Good to know. And a question that I think is important for everyone here, every panelist, uh, is there a charge for your services? Do you have to pay to access your services? And I think across the board, the answer is a no, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, that the services are all free accessible services. Okay. Um, um, I'll just uh, indicate. So we have funded programs and the Start Smart program is funded. Um, a couple of the, the DigiSmart is funded. So we look for funders because we're a private corporation, but we do have access for people who want to pay their own way they can if they don't fit funding criteria. But our majority of the people that come into our programs are funded through the programs and partnerships that we have in the community. So I just wanted to clarify that. Perfect. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. So majority of the programs are funded, but there are other options for other people. So really good to know. Um, and uh, what about Monica, while I have you here, I have somebody here who's interested in starting a business, but they don't know where to start. And do you provide services across Saskatchewan? Yes, we do. We provide services right across Saskatchewan. And that's what that first initial call is a really good one with Elaine. She'll take people through a good variety of questions to get them thinking about what might be an option for them. And because of the way we've set up with technology here, we can we can deliver anywhere in the province. And our disability funded program is for is all virtual. So it, it is throughout the province. So wherever you are, give us a call. Awesome. And I see there's lots of newcomers here on our chat. So I just want to say welcome to Saskatchewan. We're so thrilled that you're here. And specific questions about like, I have this degree from my home country, so I want to make sure that I can get a job in my field. And are there any things like what what can I do to make sure that I can access a career in my field? Um, maybe Kaylee, I could pass that one over to you. 
Yeah, a very large percentage of our clients are newcomers. Uh, you know, it's hard to, to settle into a, a new country and, uh, you know, there's a lot of resources and, uh, you know, new things, right? So we're definitely here to help newcomers as well. Um, we're, we provide the same job search advice and career advice that we would for uh, anyone, uh, except, you know, obviously customized to that person's goals. Uh, again, we've got lots of community-based organizations who help us out with settlement needs. So if a newcomer is interested in you know, becoming a citizen or needs housing, uh, language services, no one does, doesn't know how to get a health card, uh, needs help with finances or budgeting, you know, just to know the rights and responsibilities while they're in Canada, uh, getting foreign credentials recognized, uh, translation interpretation. Uh, we've got services that we can connect you to to help with all of those things. Oh, Colleen, I think you're muted. I'm so sorry. I said, sorry, while I have you here, um, I have a really interesting, interesting question, which is, um, I actually want to apply for a job within the government of Saskatchewan. So can I still use uh, SAS Jobs Career Services to help me um, prepare for a job interview or an application to a job within the provincial government? Yes, definitely. Yeah, just last week I helped somebody apply for a job with uh, SAS government. For sure. I mean, if that's your goal, if working for the government of Saskatchewan is what you want to do, then that's what we focus on because we're all about you, the job seeker, and what you need. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. No, I think uh, that's a really great question. I'm glad it was asked because it's, yeah, any job that's out there that you basically the dream big opportunities. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Aim high. <laughs> exactly. Um, so I guess just one like final question before we kind of wrap up here. Um, I'm just cognizant of the time and I know we're going to wrap at one at one o'clock, but um, what I guess would you all say is the most important? I'll give just one one minute to for everyone to answer if I could just you know in one word or one sentence what would you what would be the biggest advice for somebody who's looking for a change or a shift or an education um, change um, or whatever it might be in their career seeking journey um, from your experience as a career development practitioner and professional what would that be I'll start with you Kaylee number one piece of advice don't go it alone if you have somebody to help you it's going to be easier. You're going to find success faster. You're going to accomplish your goals sooner. We're here to be a partner for you and make the whole process easier. Just don't try and go it alone. Reach out for some help. Contact us to let us serve you. Great. And Monica, and very briefly, what would you say your biggest tip to somebody in the job seeking world? Uh, dream big. Like I, you know, I think people underestimate their capacity and their capability and, um, I think that leaves our, our communities at a loss because we all have so much to contribute. So dream big, believe in yourself, ask for help and uh, step out and, and make it happen. You, you are the only one who can create your future. Awesome. And Dallas, for those who are, you know, questioning, how do I, how do I get through this? Or I'm in a, I'm in a lump, lump bad spot. I want to get over this place. So Dallas, what would you say? Um, I would say something very similar. If you think that your, your education is something that would help you get a job, or maybe something that would help with your sort of mental health and wellness, just assume you can do it, right? The program is set up to support you. So go to ignite.ca and apply, and we'll take it from there. Awesome. And Bill, you have the last word. What advice would you give to Career Seeker? Well, I guess in addition to everything that everybody else has said, they captured things very well. Uh, I would say research, research yourself, your skills, your abilities, your uh, personal suitability, your aptitudes, your interests. Research the job market, go in with your eyes open, take the time to uh, get some experience if you can shadow or mentor, uh, talk to people in the field, uh, but really take the time to do a good and thorough assessment of everything because right now education is expensive and the worst thing would be to spend four years like I did uh, chasing something that really wasn't your dream. I sit before you as a product of a failed guidance counseling intervention. So I know how important it is to do the right research. 
Awesome. That's great advice. So I guess uh, closing on today's theme, which is the path to success. Um, I, If I may summarize on behalf of the panelists and the people here, it's don't go it alone. Um, your path to success is um, open to other people who are here on this webinar uh, and who are prepared to support you in that journey. So please feel supported. Um, and I know that's exactly why SAS Jobs is running this webinar to promote their services. And uh, we want the more people in Saskatchewan um, working and happy in their careers as possible. So uh, thanks again to SAS Jobs for running this event and for all the panelists who shared with us today and shared their advice and their experiences and please know that they're all here to serve you and to help you so thanks again to everyone who participated I will once again just share the uh, SAS jobs email address, which is career services at gov, G O V, dot S K dot C A. And that's who you can contact if you want to get in touch with really any of the panelists that were here today and also just to connect with any. Uh, career services from SAS Jobs. Um, there's also a phone number, which is 1-833-613-0485, and it's option two to get connected with them. Um, and this webinar will also be available following the event on the SAS Jobs YouTube page. So if there's something that you missed or you wanted to kind of review on your own time after the fact or catch some of those contact information for people, you can find this on the YouTube channel after that. So if there was a question that wasn't answered in the chat today, um, the SAS Jobs staff will also be going back to answer all those questions. So. If something didn't get answered, um, then please know that you will get contacted and they, they will work to answer all the questions that were there today. Okay, so again, I'd like to thank everybody who attended today. Thank you for participating and to the panelists and to SAS Jobs for running this amazing event for Career Month. Um, again, my name is Colleen Strau here on behalf of the Saskatchewan Career Development Association, and it's been a pleasure to moderate this event for you today. So I hope you all have a lovely afternoon and um, best wishes. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. Thank you, Colleen. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you, everyone. And all the success to everybody who is out there looking to make that change. Absolutely. Well said.